energy flowing through the biosphere. That's even better. There's a energy is neat because when you break things down into calories, you can start comparing a wetland and a cornfield or a, a, a concrete plant with a forest because it's all about energy flows, some more renewable, sustainable than others. Uh, there's a really good essay. It's in a book by an ecologist named Paul Colombo called Why Big Fierce Animals Are Rare. And, uh, uh, simplifying Colombo a lot, he talks about the old Eltonian food pyramid where each level you go up and as far as consumption, bigger and bigger critters, they need more energy. You know, you go from, from phytoplankton to zooplankton to little fish to big fish to ospreys and eagles that feed on them. And he concludes there are a few animals that have learned to cheat on this, like blue whales, which don't have to fight gravity and just float there and strain algae. But most critters are limited by being higher and higher on this energy pyramid. So he says there really aren't and can't be dragons that fly around eating Bengal tigers because you just run out of energy. The biosphere can't fuel that. Now, I think Colin Vaux missed a bet because I think there are dragons. Uh, we can go around eating Bengal tigers if we want. Now, not forever, because we've got this energy from fossil fuels, which we know aren't in any meaningful time frame renewable, but I think we actually are the dragons in a sense. We're, we're the only critter that has the energy resources to go around and act like that. So you can have a lot of fun with the flows of energy and matter through the biosphere.